Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen with some dev responses and announcements. There are bug fixes incoming to 3.9 and a multitude of things that you can get involved with to help with feedback being given and all that sort of jazz. I'll take a quick look at what's happening this week first. So this week in Star Citizen, there is no free flight Fleet Week this week, that's going to be later in May. Later today, Tuesday, we will see a post announcing the five final Imperator candidates. This is an in-law thing that apparently in the future players might be able to influence who actually becomes Imperator. Uh, Inside Star Citizen this week is going to look at new tech for ships and give us an update on prisons, how it's been going with them, what they've learned, and the changes that they've got planned for the system in the future. And um, that's for Thursday. On Friday, we have Star Citizen Live, and that's going to have the level designers for the Persistent Universe answering some questions about creating locations in game and there's a thread for gathering questions for that anything that i discuss there will be links down below uh, or an article with all the links there uh, star citizen alpha 3.9.0 has a bunch of issues with some players having a stack of bugs and game breaking problems while others have none it's been a bit of an erratic bumpy road for some and not others which is a little bit unfair i suppose in some situations there is however a 3.9 live release update from cig and they um, have said a few things Thing. So let's take a look. We are closely monitoring a few new issues that have popped up with our latest patch and we'll keep you updated as we know more. So we've got a link to some of the most reported issues they've received and some workarounds for that. Basically they suggest that you keep an eye out on their known issues list which I'll link down below as well. Long term persistence, alpha UEC and items that you may have purchased ended up being in a very unstable position with 3.9.0. Fortunately, we have had back-end team members working non-stop to rework how the wallet system functions to make it more stable, which includes some of the account smashing issues like invisible character and missing Moby glasses. We hope to have a hot fix for that soon, so potentially that's before 3.9.1. Some other issues that we're actively investigating or working on are repair services not working, players entering a no-clip state, ships being set to an unretrievable, unclaimable state. We already have some fixes set for 3.9.1 alpha, including duplicate trains, the missing freelancer miss shields, and the freelancer guns firing in odd directions. More to come. That's not an exhaustive list. There might be more uh, issues and bugs. Um, also fixed with 3.9.1, hopefully. Uh, they're monitoring and tracking a number of issues that have been reported on a smaller scale as well. And if you come across an issue in game, they want you to report it on the issue council. They also said that they're reviewing some early feedback from 3.9 and discussions are underway about fixing some longer term problems such as quantum travel, star map usability, and interaction mood, m mood, m mode usability. <laughs> They then go on to give links to various areas you can give feedback on. Again, I'll link what I can down below. They range from the most irritating bug to frustrating gameplay mechanic, um, as well as general feedback in both the uh, Persistent Universe, but also in Arena Commander and Star Marine. It's worth getting involved as your feedback genuinely helps shape the game and could lead to even more fixes in 3.9.1. Cloud Imperium are requesting feedback on other things as well beyond that. If you dig through Spectrum, uh, I found something about uh, rock scattering on planets and moons. We have seen feedback on dense and uniform rock scatter, which makes traversal by vehicle difficult on planetary surfaces. We would like to know what planets or moons are the worst offenders, keeping in mind that rock scatter is realistic in some scenarios, but we want the landscapes to both appear natural and still not frustrate regular traversal. With that in mind, please list and upvote your very worst offender for rock scatter um, that seems too uniform and dense for the landscape. I actually think that gravity plays quite a big part here uh, as well, personally. For like certain moons and planets, it's not just the way that the rocks are, but it's also the sort of like your attachment to the ground. I do like that Cloud Imperium are looking into this though. Some moons should really allow you to make use of vehicles and really let rip. Others want to be more restrictive and that's sort of cool as well. There was a question, can you lock frames in game and in menu so potentially less CPU and GPU resources are used? Because when you're in the menu screen, for example, um, your GPU and CPU sort of like try to max out and blah. Uh, you can set a command of sys underscore max fps equals 60 or whatever frame rate you want to set there uh, in a user.cfg or as a command in the console. This will only have an effect if vsync's off though. I recommend you do turn vsync off um, and set a max frame rate though. 
I use a user.cfg for every patch. You can find a guide to one and the one I use on my website, boardgamer.co.uk. In regards to Star Citizen and if they will support any specific given um, controller, like a specific 3D mouse or something, CIG's Yogi Kalat said, we usually avoid supporting specific input devices as adding support is not trivial and can be quite time consuming. Also, in the long run, when software needs updating, all gaming sticks, game pads, HOTAS, um, pedals, etc. usually expose themselves as generic USB game control device. Uh, that is by far the easiest way to get device support for games. Basically, Star Citizen will support a large range of standard and compatible devices. Very specific odd ones, maybe not though. There are some rec changes coming to 3.9.1. That's the sort of um, currency used for Arena Commander and Star Marine, with CIG Duncan taking to the forums explaining, we recently refactored how rec is earned. Before it seemed almost random how much rec you'd get from a game, you'll now notice that it's linked to your score, 10% of your score in fact. We also had a pass over all vehicle scoring, all vehicles now have a handset score. For example, killing a Gladius in 3.9.0 will earn you 1600 damage score plus whatever awarded bonuses that you earn. Regarding solo play, single player is really offline mode, you're not connected to a server. So there's no way of us to verify what you're doing is legit. Right now we're focused on theaters of war and I can't make promises, but I eventually hope that we will allow solo play in online modes. Improving the leaderboard is on our radar, but we can't say when it will be addressed as we're focused on theaters of war and other improvements across electronic success, which is the sort of arena commander and star marine modes as well. So what are they going to do about wreck issues and low payouts for wreck? I've looked into why you might be getting only 380 wreck for a 3,800 score from a 20 minute battle royale. And it seems that we missed the mark with some of the scores we gave vehicles. I won't bore you with all the details, but I've done another pass over all the ships to better reflect how hard they are to take down and the loadout slots available to them. I've lowered the score limit on Battle Royale to 15,000 from 25,000 and Squadron Battle to 30,000 from 60,000 as those reflected the old scoring system. Both have also had their time limit reduced to 15 minutes. I've also increased the score to rec conversion to 70% up from 10%. Finally, I've added a temporary 50% bonus to wreck earned in Star Marine while we better balance the difference in score earned between it and Arena Commander. You'll see the changes in 3.9.1. With these changes, you'll be able to very quickly earn the wreck you need to rent equipment and ships for Arena Commander and Star Marine. It'll be interesting to see as well if Theatres of War is going to be using Wreck for anything as well, or if it's just going to be its own thing. I hope that that was informative and useful for some of you. I really want people to get involved as much as they can in the Star Citizen project, giving their um, feedback uh, and voice into the game. I also am interested about your experiences of 3.9.0. Have they been good? Have they been bad? Can, can you not log on? Do you think that 3.9.1 might fix the issue you're having? What about my audio for this video? I've been using RTX... Um, the, the new sort of voice um, AI thing and I think it makes it a bit crackly in my opinion so I'm not sure if I use it again but tell me uh, in the feedback below if you want me to use it but there's actually quite a lot of sound going on uh, in my room because I've got an aircon on and a load of fans from an Alienware PC blurting out brrr, um, being aggressive towards me I'm interested to know like with your feedback do you think that it's important to CIG do you think they don't listen to it do you think it just gets lost in the crowd do you actively uh, give feedback and do bug reporting or do you think it doesn't matter that's not feedback shaming that's a genuine question i certainly div don't give enough um official feedback whatever your thoughts i'd love to hear from you in the comments below every month we have a giveaway for may we're giving away a star citizen game package with arrow light fighter all you've got to do to be in for a chance of winning that is comment on any of my videos made during the month more details below I am a shill for a couple of companies, NordVPN and NordPass. If you are looking for a VPN or a password management system, I recommend you check them out. They've got many benefits over free services. And as I'm pretty security conscious, uh, I love those kind of services. Also, there's Shadow. If you are thinking about getting a new gaming rig or upgrading your gaming PC or Star Citizen or whatever, then consider Shadow instead. It is an internet cloud-based subscription service like Stadia, like G 
GeForce Now, but this one gives you access to a full Windows 10 environment that's fully customizable, and that is significantly better in my opinion, allowing you to do a lot more with it. Check out the links below for them or use the code BoardGamer for discount. Also, if you wish to support the channel further, there is Patreon, there's the YouTube join member button down below. That really helps. This is a community supported channel and I wouldn't be able to do what I do without the support that I get. If you want to share these videos, if you want to comment, give feedback, whatever, that is also in hugely appreciated. Thanks very much for watching guys. You take care and I'll see you in the verse.